The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your lovable, squeezably soft host. Once again, do we go into the breach, dear friends. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, we're down 13 points on the S&P cash. We're to that 2 o'clock hour. Uh, on um, the day when option market makers go delta neutral. We'll know a lot more. I did a run at about 1.30, and not much has changed. So I'm kind of sitting on my hands. I am fairly bearish. Uh, the question is, we've got light volume up, even lighter. Well, we've got light volume up and just slightly less light volume down. Uh, but on the day that they go delta neutral, the whole idea is to reduce the risk on any options that are still out there uh, that expire on a week from from Friday. The idea is they want to make sure that if the market goes up or down, that they don't have much exposure. Well, they didn't have much exposure. We talked about that before. In fact, they've got about the least amount of exposure that they've had in many, 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 many years. Um, the markets would literally have to go down. Mm, to really for them to get hurt, maybe uh, 200 points on the S&P cash. And that's a week from Friday. So these guys, I think, are scared. It may be that someone's told them something that's probably not true, which is maybe, uh, maybe some kind of political issue uh, coming to bear that would hurt the market. Uh, my view, though, is it's more economic at least from what I can see now. Anyway, uh, when they do this uh, on Wednesday, by about 2 o'clock, if the market is going to see a big move, if it was uh, the uh, effect of them going delta neutral that really caused the movement on that Wednesday, whether it's up or down, you see uh, a great deal uh of action in the last couple hours. So we'll watch it closely. I don't see much as of yet in what's changing. Now, 80% of the time, the market is higher than today's uh, low a week from Friday. It's just got a bullish bias. There's a lot of reasons why, but mostly people buy a lot of puts. And the easiest way is to just hold the market up for a little while till the monthlies, which are far superior number and dollars. Uh, and of course, the weeklies have such high decay rates that you can hardly ever make money on those. Uh, but you, when you actually look at the monthlies, uh, much more of the decay is out of them. So there's a lot more risk. So they don't ever really try to keep the weeklies up. Uh, the price for the premium in there generally rules out any chance of ever making any money in the weeklies. You can, but where it's fairly low on the monthlies, it's extremely low on the weeklies. Uh, but I will tell you this, uh, that where on a monthly basis, it's an average of 1% higher uh, a week from Friday. When it is lower, it's a average of about three and a half percent lower. So if we start moving down, if we can't start to rally, if you start looking at this market and we go through a few days and we just continue to creep down, uh, look for a day where the thing is just going to blow out uh, all the people on the lows. That's normally, if you're short, where you want to cover in on the short term. But, uh, you know, we're off 13 points. I don't see a lot of buying. Uh, the volume's fairly light. Again, it was light down. It was just lighter up. Uh, so it's not like we've got a, a dynamic uh, distortion in the market 
between up and down volume. We just have light volume both up and down. Uh, as we start off the show today, uh, the uh, CBOE volume on the way down early in the day uh, had a lot of juice, and we're already doing 4.4 billion shares. That's compared to, uh, what was it, uh, about 6.9 billion shares, 6.8 billion yesterday. So we are doing extremely uh, much more volume than we saw yesterday. There isn't a lot of movement in what we are looking at in the dollar. And, of course, uh, if we want to look to the TLT, this thing's been banging on this 120 level, which has been support 122 kind of at resistance. Um, but the question is, if we just can't continue to hang around this area, uh, the question is, do we just uh, uh, gap down, uh, down into the 118s? And certainly it looks like it could do that. Uh, looking at some a lot of other stocks, yeah, you're down on lighter volume, uh, but both at bottoms, uh, long-term bottoms and long-term uh, highs. It's not uncommon to see three or four or five days as the market moves lower until you start really getting some serious volume on the way back. Uh, on the way back, so while I'd say intermediate and short-term highs and lows. Uh, can come off with volume, and those things may run 15 or 20 days. When you're actually looking at very long-term highs and lows, it's not uncommon not to see volume for a while. I remember seeing, uh, I think it was the S&P low at about, uh, was, I'm going to say 759. That sounded about right. I think that was about right. Uh, and uh, one of my... Uh, uh, original mentors, uh, Tim Ward, said, you know, it's not uncommon to see volume, especially off that first leg. No one wants to buy it, and the volume just doesn't come in. Uh, and the volume then comes in later. And certainly, all the way from that, uh, I think it was about a 759 low, all the way up past 1,000, um, one of the biggest percentage moves in a long time, there wasn't any volume. Uh, everybody didn't believe it at all. And of course, uh, now we're up 2,700 and change um, years later. But it was one of those things where that was an incredible long-term low and some of the incredible long-term highs that we saw uh, that led to that low uh, also had very, very light volume for a, for a, a little bit of time. Not, not an instant, we've got a, a bunch of bottle rocks bottle rockets and Roman candles going off. It just was very, very light. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, <laughs> a polar bear vortex. Oh, I like that. Uh, that was my uh, Hollywood name, polar vortex. That's was, no, but uh, most people don't know that. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're kind of drifting up a little bit. That's not uncommon this time of year. Uh, and the very light uh, volume coming in uh, to the last day of fun buying. So we'll probably have a slight bullish, bearish, uh, bullish bias into the end of the day. But if we don't get much out of here, look out for tomorrow. We'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. And uh, we'll do a little history and then we'll get into charts. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1889, Bayer began distributing aspirin in powder form to physicians to give it to the patients one gram at a time. Brand name came for A for acetyl spur from a spiria plant uh, and the suffix N commonly used for medications. It can quickly the number one selling dr uh, drug worldwide. Uh, Bayer, of course, uh, uh, ended up giving up the trademark for aspirin. Uh, as a result of the First World War and reparations, uh, it continued on to be a huge drug. Uh, it was until 1996 until uh, Bayer actually bought back the company uh, that had the rights uh, to uh, aspirin and Bayer in the United States. They got their name back. So, uh, eh, a long, circuitous route. Uh, for aspirin as one of the best pain relievers of all time. Uh, it'd been around for a long time as uh, willow, white willow bark, uh, but it really, in that form, really messed with people's stomachs. But it would bring down uh, fevers uh, when they made the synthetic version of it. Um, and, of course, the buffered version of it um, happened a whole lot. Or, actually uh, ended up being much better. And of course, still the number one drug worldwide. On this day in 1889, uh, what else do we have? Well, again, we're just kind of playing around here. Again, uh, this is one of the asymmetrical trade uh, weeks that you normally get. And that is, it's either going to be up a little bit or down a whole lot. The chances of it being up a little bit are fairly good, probably 75%. The chances of it going down, though, are maybe three or four times what it can go up. That's at least my reading of what options are. Uh, one of the other things you can look at is whether or not they can rally it today. This is one of those rare days when we both have the end of fund buying and options expiration uh, uh, going delta neutral on the same day. 
So uh, maybe a few cross currents out there, but man, we've been going through it for almost uh, over two weeks. How many stocks have come up here and just died at these levels without much push? Uh, I would suspect that we'd have to have some kind of catalyst, and that catalyst has been selling the sizzle, not the steak, i.e. selling a trade deal, uh, and trade deals never come this quick. I think they're going to come about four times quicker uh, than traditionally, but that still means that it could be a year away. I certainly don't think we have anything in the th next three months uh, that are going to do that. 2777 on the S&P cash as we start the show. And again, the volume uh, actually was pretty good this morning, kind of tapered off in the afternoon as it normally does. And of course, the thing to watch is probably the last 30 minutes of the day. Four and a half billion shares as we get into the first segment of the show. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, looking at some other things going on here. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, one of the things I wanted to get to first was Micron. Then we'll look at some other charts. Uh, saw that that one was off fairly strongly. Um, I suspect this is a offshoot into a lot of articles I was reading about how much memory that the uh, NVIDIA AMD crowd is going to be buying in the near future. But certainly down volume is going to be uh, more than yesterday. And what do we have today? Uh, 36.2 million shares on Micron, uh, 29 million shares yesterday. Let's take a quick look at uh, the SMHs. I mean, you had some good news in this sector, but I don't think it was enough. Uh, AMBA, uh, which is, oops, typed it too quick, AMBA, which is the uh, company that makes the compression video chips for cameras like GoPros and that kind of stuff. Um, it's still finding people buying those kind of cameras. GoPro, just at the price point that they're at, isn't getting that kind of uh, uh, business. Uh, you finally got back up to this gap down, which goes back to, what is that? June 6, yeah, June 6 of 2018, where you came down with almost 11 million shares. Uh, it came up, touched that gap uh, again today on 3.3 million shares. So again, while there may be stocks outperforming others, uh, it still is one of these things where uh, probably only 20% of these stocks that have big volume are able to break out and hold the previous highs. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, I wanted to go back to some of these other ones. Uh, to, 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 again, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Okay. XLU, uh, which is the utilities sector, is up at previous highs and hanging here. Um, this one looks fairly horrible, uh, like a great deal of the market, and that is the energy off these lows. In the case, this one's the December 26 low is, you know, 30, 35% off uh, all the way back up to the December 13th high. That was $57.17, 26 million shares. Yesterday, you got into it with 12 million shares. Today, you're into it with 8 million shares. Again, there's just, uh, you can go back to, uh, the 22nd of February, we got into it with 15 million shares, but you're still 11 million shares short. And there just isn't a lot of juice. Uh, ideally, if you're really bullish on these things, you should wait until they pull back. If they pull back on light volume, then you get an opportunity to take another run up there. Maybe the next time it will break and get some volume on the way back up. Right now, I just do not see it. Almost all of these stocks we've been talking about for the last two weeks, have come up and run out of juice. Uh, talking about juice, Aqua America, a water company, WTR, down on the 23rd of October with 3.3 million shares, got into it on December 13th with just 770,000 shares. Uh, you got the, the highest 700, or excuse me, the highest 623,000 shares uh, at $36.40. And that's just not. Now, that rolled back down on very light volume today. But uh, talk about incredibly light energy except for one day. 
in this one, it's had it. Now, not a lot of money to be made on it, pretty uh, small range in this stock, but one of the ones that shows that there's very little juice to go after these. Uh, VV, which is uh, Vanguard large cap, just hit the highs, did so on a little lighter uh, energy, you know, slightly lighter than the December 3rd. Uh, but again, it, what's really disturbing me is the energy off these December 26 lows that have been light, light, light. We're going to go to the break. But like said in the Philippines many years ago, I shall return. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back uh, to, to, to what we have here. I've got to find this. It's buried back here. Um, first one is Pete in San Francisco. Thought on Western digital puts. Um, I kind of like it. Uh, I would have liked it a lot better yesterday uh, and the day before, which is really where you needed to pull the trigger on them to, to uh, make something. Um, I looked at everything real quick. You got about three days to cover, which isn't bad in Western Digital because eventually this company's going to zero. Uh, the question is timing uh, on when spinning hard drives get replaced uh, by SSDs. 
And I think you can make a case that that's really moving along, especially in the data center business and in uh, PCs, uh, kind of rare to get one except in the cheapest out there. Um, I would love for this thing to bounce maybe to 50, 51, 52 and a half would be perfect. Um, I don't know if you ever get it. Um, I do like the way it came up. You had a lot of shorts. It's pretty much wrong, most of them out of the market. Um, but, uh, you know, about $43 is the next target. That only gives you about five bucks out here. And you've had some high shorts in the last couple of days, upwards of 25%. That would suggest that you are going to get an opportunity to see this bounce. Um, you may not. But, I mean, the odds aren't real clear. They're probably like, 60% you get a bounce, 40% you don't. So as far as I'm concerned, the risk reward, especially for options, would be probably 50s uh, for April. And I would say that you want those, um, yeah, you want those in Aprils. But you want that when the stock is probably 51 to 51 and a half. You might get one real good day where they run the shorts, and then you get an opportunity to set the hook. But uh, yeah, it's it's already looking fairly weak. You you did get your close under the uh, nine day moving average today, so you could have taken it at the open. That would have been tough. Um, but again, anywhere above the nine day moving average with light volume, you could pull the trigger again. Uh, you can give me a call at eight seven seven nine two seven eight and that uh, the eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. He said. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have going on out here? We're off uh, 13 points, kind of hovering out here, not seeing anything in the way of volume. Again, volume just slightly more on the downside today than it's been uh, on the upside. So it's still a slight bias. And uh, we may see that bias run into Friday now, I suspect. Uh, what else do we have going on here that we want to take a look at? Oh, we'll go back to the list of stuff. Tremble, uh, we looked at that earlier last week. A lot of these are starting to roll over today. That's a 1.6 million share high on December 3rd, $40.35. You went to 40.80 a couple of days ago. You've got your confirmation today that it's made the high with a what's going to be a solid close below it. Again, you want about three days out here for this thing to actually give it up and confirm that this thing's going to sell off hard. Uh, SXC, which is Sun Coke Energy. Uh, I don't know why that one's in there. Pump. Yeah, it should be pump and dump. Uh, this one, uh, $20.91 on May 9th. And you got that uh, to, to, with 3.1 million shares. Got into it with 1.8 million shares uh, two days ago and instantly rolled back over. Uh, a lot of these energy, uh, energy stocks look very, very weak. And of course, that's what really kind of held the market up over the last few days. Uh, without the energy segment, I, it is now going to be very tough for this market to rally. Uh, another one, Portland General Electric Company, POR, up at its highs. And again, when you start looking for electric companies, that tells you people are looking for places to hide their money. December 12th, $50.00. 40 cents, 883,000 shares. Got into it yesterday with 600,000 shares. Uh, today, you just have 235,000 shares. Again, it's not that these are going to make money. They're just going to lose less money. And fund managers uh, thinking a market going lower that have to be 100% invested shift as much as they can to the stocks that will lose the least. Power shares, preferred portfolio, PGX. I had a high with uh, almost 10 million shares on July the 6th of last year, 14.45. You got into that the last couple of days, uh, 1.8 million shares, 1.6 million shares. Uh, today, you got about 1.8 million shares. So again, you're back up to those highs. And any close below 14.45 puts another pin in the uh, sell column. Uh, Liberty Global, uh, Lilla. L-I-L-A is a symbol on that one. Uh, testing its previous uh, November 8th high, $20.01, 
742,000 shares tested it a couple days ago with just uh, 279,000 shares yesterday 326 today 154,000 this is really like i said we're in a very good position here oh is that right oh no yep it is right i just wanted to check these because they there have been bad quotes out today uh, so we're now down 15 points and yes, uh, there's another email here. Yes, uh, a deliberate downside move today would probably be a fairly good indication that we will sell off all the way through options expiration. Uh, Liberty uh, Global, L-I-L-A, again, we saw that. Um, energy wasn't that bad on the way up, just never really amounted to anything uh, for these highs. Uh, we've been talking about some of these uh, uh, rail companies. And there was some news earlier in the den about uh, the price of uh, taking containers uh, back and forth. Uh, both that and the Baltic Dry Index both look rather bad. Uh, Kansas City Southern up on very, very light volume today. Again, any closes now below the nine-day moving averages tell you that these things are probably ready to give it up. HPQ. Eh, it blew apart. No big deal there. Uh, HAL, Halliburton, again, uh, this whole energy sector on sale now. Kind of was holding the market up. Uh, let's see what else is out here. Uh, to to, to uh, For Scout Technologies, I think we talked about this one last Friday. Uh, another one that was going above previous highs. In this case, it was the uh, September 21st high at $40.96 with 2 million shares. Got into it with uh, about 900,000 shares, maybe a million, but certainly testing the previous highs with a lighter volume. Now, this one did have a big boost of energy back into uh, February 8th. And if we have a horrible market, I wouldn't be shorting this one, uh, but I would tell you that around 30 to 50 on light volume, this may be one of the better looking stocks out there if it gets thrown away and thrown out with the bathwater of a market pulling back. Uh, CSX, uh, we talked about this one. It still hasn't quite made it up to its eye. Uh, and so the energy on this one, uh, a little bit better on the way up, uh, certainly a little better on the high end, but not very good either way. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. back uh to, 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 oh had a question uh come in from the email about nvidia and amd and uh, my comments on memory and yeah this thing did have a little bit more volume and broke the previous high of january 25th on february 25th that's nvidia by the way uh but it instantly couldn't hold that high it slowed out in fact, they said a couple of things over the last couple of days about how it's probably going to take them all the way to the end of the summer uh, to roll through a lot of the inventory. So, uh, eh, just look at that. I think if the market did pull back, you could see uh, 131 on this one, maybe 125. Uh, and, you know, you've got about the right amount of time for them to turn around. The market looks about six months forward so any dip down here uh that could be found with light volume might be the buy for nvidia uh, for a fall rally but you may need to may take all the way into uh, may to find that low in it i'll take a quick look at amd so on amd you're down not much volume now uh, but certainly it looks like it's going to come back to $20.50, somewhere in that area. Of course, um, these folks don't do uh, just video cards, but also processors. Things have been doing a little bit better for them. Uh, they are calling, coming back down on lighter volume to these nice gaps up back on January. Uh, but again, you know, I don't know if you, when that low comes in, if it's going to take a while for it to... Uh, come out but twenty dollars twenty dollars and fifty cents somewhere in that area is where you want to be looking at amd uh to, to serious moron not a lot of stocks out here that are testing lows at the present time but there are a few uh the serious one c-o-n-e did it with more volume than the january 2nd low energy off the top too so i'm looking for these also as confirming signals over the next few days as they bust through those uh, original lows. Do, 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 do. Let's see who else we have out here. Uh, some of the other stocks that are out here at lows are Carbonite. We talked a little bit about this one yesterday and how beautiful it looked on light volume. Uh, yesterday you had uh, 881,000 shares compared to the 4.4 million shares you saw on February 8th. So, yeah. Uh, you got a little bounce, but again, probably not going to be uh, enough. But it uh, may tell you that if uh, we get a couple of weeks of selling and this thing can hold out at 22 bucks, you might find some kind of viable low. Uh, to, 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 let's go back and check in the markets. Yeah, still off 15 points in the S&P Cash, off 125 in the Dow, NASDAQ's off 59. Let me update those just to make sure they're right. Yep, looks like it. Uh, to, to, to Russell's off 24, and the worst performing of the bunch, uh, off one, yeah, off one and a half percent. Okay, uh, to, 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 to. 
Okay, anything else going on? I want to look through there. Someone asking about Intel, INTC. So we'll go to that one. Um, as I said, I was looking for 53 on this. I got up to 54.10. Uh, let's go a little bit farther back here, um, which was just the gap. It pretty much did exactly what it should. Uh, you had a gap down back on June 18th with 40, let's call it 41 million shares. You got into it with 21 million shares on the 4th, and now you're rolling back over. Support's going to be somewhere in around that $52 range. Uh, Alibaba, uh, back up against the August 23rd high. That's 186.50 at 79, uh, uh, 79 million shares, excuse me. Uh, you got to 188.04 with 15 million shares, and you just never really had a sign of strength above that. Uh, this looks like it easily come back to 177, which is just the gap this one had. But, I mean, you're basically 80 million shares to 15 million shares in round numbers. Um, energy wasn't as bad as you would think on the way back up. But again, extremely light test of that high, which uh, makes you think you're going to at least go back and test the last gap up in that one. Uh, I had some questions about uh, Netflix, NFLX, and Apple. We'll talk about that. Uh, Netflix never got back up to its high. Um, there's some arguments out there today with numbers about Apple and Apple paying uh, Netflix uh, the drive through to be able to uh, use their uh, product on iPhones. Uh, kind of interesting the, to see that Apple makes about $3.50 each month uh, because of them allowing you to use the app on their and buy it through their app store. Uh, it seems somewhat confiscatorial. In my opinion, uh, Apple just kind of gone sideways here for, what, 15 days. I continue to think that this is a setup for Apple uh, that is distribution. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's Buffett on the other side of that. But every time it goes a penny higher, he's there to sell. But it's hard to tell. Uh, other questions on Amazon. Uh, Amazon continues to act poorly and badly in public. Their stock, eh, kind of the same thing. Uh, to, to January 31st, you had the big spike high, the island reversal, uh, and a gap lower. Uh, that came on 11 million shares. You got into that with 6 million shares on the 4th. Yesterday, 3.7. And on the 6th, came into it, uh, you did, well, actually today. Uh, you did 3 million shares, so there just isn't really much juice out here. Now, this one, for a big cap, has maybe the biggest uh, change in uh, energy on the way back higher. That February 8th low up was about 30% uh, less than the energy off that January 31st high. So pretty risky hanging on to it here. Uh, we'll look at uh, Microsoft. And what else? Da, da, da. Uh, you never really made it up to that. Well, you kind of made it up to that high on December 3rd. Um, we were thinking that maybe you could push it up to the October 3rd high. Um, again, uh, I mean, massive... Uh, less energy on the way back up off this December 26 low. Uh, this is extremely telling for the tech side of this market. And of course, you were about, uh, what, seven, yeah, about six, seven million shares light off that December 3rd high on Microsoft. Uh, the big thing for me has been this energy that just never really has come back in. It was just pushed back up on nothing but a wing and a prayer. Now you're getting to the point where you're starting to look for sell signals and Microsoft may be a little bit longer and hold up a little longer than the rest of the market, but is extremely weak at this point. We'll be back in a minute. 
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And I had a couple more emails come in. Um, yeah, I'm still looking for 2650 as the pullback spot for this market. And maybe it's just on incredibly light volume and it takes a while, drives everybody nuts, but it certainly looks to me like we could get it. Options continue to look uh, like the market makers are incredibly worried about any kind of, uh, or not worried about higher prices, uh, but really kind of worried about lower prices. Uh, one of the uh, markets where they could lose maybe the least amount of money in many years, they've set it up to where uh, the stock, uh, the SPY uh, would have to get down to uh, 235 before uh, it would really change much in the risk reward for those folks. So, you know, am I looking that we could go down another 20 points? I, I think we could on the, on the spies through expiration. May not get there, but I think that'll continue. Um, as we said earlier in the week, I had a couple of theories. One of them is that the many people, not all, but many people in the five highest tax states um, are going to be uh, selling a lot of stock uh, to make up for those taxes uh, that they told us all how much that they wanted to pay. Uh, but when it actually gets to the point of actually paying higher taxes and why the rich should be pay uh, tax more uh, are kind of grumbling a bit. Uh, 
we were just saying it. We really didn't mean it. And of course, we had the governor of New York uh, out uh, jawboning today, telling everybody how horrible it is and why everybody's fleeing the state. So I don't think there's anything new in the information there other than the fact that how long it takes for these guys to sell enough stock to pay their uh, state taxes that they used to write off. And a lot of people can make the case that that was a way of pushing taxes to other low tax paying states. But uh, that's it. I just expect that we're going to have a little while of tax selling continuing. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.